Our skater with the day off, 248-539-9797. Ticket text 97136 and your tweets at Doug and Gator 971. Uh, lots to talk about today as we've kind of gotten over some of the emotion of the Sunday night loss against the Green Bay Packers and, and spending some time looking forward and, and asking people, what is the overwhelming emotion they have today? Is it more about, hey, they got a playoff game coming up this weekend and that's kind of fun, or is it still disappointment over what happened on Sunday? Uh, we did ask that question via Twitter. Actually, it was Kang, our producer, that originally tweeted out the following. What level is higher for you right now? Excitement for the playoffs or disappointment in the finish? 78% are still going with disappointment in the finish. The Lions will play a game on Saturday night in Seattle against a team that isn't playing all that well. It would be nice when it doesn't take them to – like, I think they have a shot because I'm, I think Seattle's vulnerable. <laughs> It's hard for me to craft a scenario which I see Detroit doing something they haven't done all year, which is beat a playoff team. But Seattle is vulnerable. Detroit played well. They were there last time. They were there last time. But at the end of the day, they're going to have to really, really play well. I was disappointed and surprised with how poorly they played collectively as a team on Sunday night. What's not going to help, Doug, is Riley Reef was out Sunday night, right? Yep. Corey Robinson filled in for him. Yep. The Lions have just put Corey Robinson on IR, and they've signed Garrett Reynolds. Now, if they have to go to a third-string right Wait, tackle. This is the Garrett Reynolds that was here, yes. like, last year? Yes. Riley Reef needs to get healthy quick, because if they go to a third-string right tackle against that defense, and that defensive line with Bennett back, not good. Travis Swanson needs to get healthy quick. You yeah, know? but at this point, I'll take Riley Reef over Swanson, because you can get by with Glasgow right. and uh, Tomlinson. No, I would agree with that. <laughs> Uh, Garrett Reynolds, when's the last time you seen him play, Doug? I, I, he played last year, right? All right, then. So he's going to start your playoff game for you? That's a bad sign, okay? That's a bad sign. I mean, that. now they need the, – the Reef hasn't been ruled out, though, right? No, he hasn't. And, and Swanson hasn't been ruled out. He's still in concussion protocol, according to Jim Caldwell. Got some concussions like that. Others just linger. You just never know. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Ticket text nine seven one three six from the Carson Anderson inbox. Doug, the Lions are done in the playoffs. There's no point in watching. Hashtag SOL. If you, this is what's so weird about same old Lions. I guess it depends on your perspective on the Lions. Maybe it depends on your perspective on life. Who thought they were going to the playoffs? Who thought they were going to the playoffs? At the beginning of this year, they make the playoffs awesome. And they're still getting the SOL tag. I call bull on most of those texts. Do you? They're, they're watching. If they're done, don't even watch. You know, but they're watching. They're turning on Saturday night. They're going to be in front of a TV, and they're going to be watching. I, I would tend to agree, but another one here. Doug, here's my stat that really brings the end of the season result not surprising. Makes the end of the season result really not surprising at all. Lions played slash play. The Giants, Cowboys, Packers, and Seahawks in a 21-day period, three of those games are away. Has to be the most brutal stretch in the NFL history. 21 days, four games against four playoff teams. Brutal. That's from Bob and Troy. Well, here's what I'd say about that, Bob. At the beginning of the year, if you go back to the beginning of the year, we discussed what this schedule provided. It provided the opportunity for a team that isn't great to make a little noise, and that's exactly what they did. This is a team that isn't great, and it made some noise. And through the winnable portion of the schedule, they played a bunch of games in the middle in consecutive weeks where you knew, hey, they can win this game. Chicago, Philly, L.A., Washington, Houston, Minnesota, Jacksonville, Minnesota. All those games, you thought they got a shot to win. And they lost a couple. They lost at Chicago. They lost at Houston. But they won at Minnesota, which is probably one at the beginning of the year they would have thought they would have lost. And... But we knew also that at the end it could be very tough at the New York Giants, at Dallas, Green Bay. Give them credit. They won the winnable games. They lost some games at the end that were tougher. It's really weird to have a team that kind of lives up to what I think is a realistic expectation. Be better than the bad teams and some of the average teams. But nobody thought they were amongst the elite. It would have been nice to see them get a bounce and steal one of these last three games. Or have a really good game, which can happen. You can just play really well. 
but they didn't. So they're nine and seven, making the playoffs. I'm not angry today. I wasn't angry yesterday either. I'm disappointed, but let's go to Evan in Woodhaven. You're next. Hi, Evan. Hey, Doc. How you doing, man? Doing good. Well, I just don't get how it's an acceptable reason for you to say that, you know, since the Lions, you know, you got you got them not going to the playoffs this year. You, you didn't have high expectations, but, you know, when they put a streak together and they're looking good and, Come. You know, they're giving all of us Lions Hopes fans up and, you know, thinking that we're going to have that, you know, second seed or, you know, that high spot in the playoffs. But they do this to us. I mean, you think that's an acceptable reason to hold people accountable for being upset and maybe not wanting to watch the game? You think that, you think having low well, expectations for the sorry franchise is, is you know, you think that's acceptable for, the, for that 9-7 this nine seven season, season. This year, I do. I don't think they have a great roster. I don't think they're loaded with great players. I think they've overachieved. If if in the future, I mean, if Bob Quinn has another good off season and they put together a, a roster, I think looks pretty good. It'll be a completely different expectation. Okay. But do you think this let me, is like? Let me let me put it to you like this: What kind of talent do you think they have? Because if you um, think they have much better talent than this, then you're delusional. Let me ask you this. What kind of talent do you think uh, – what, what kind of position is the most important position in football? What kind of position is the most important yeah, position? What, what, what position is the most important position in football? Quarterback. It's qu- okay. And you love your Matthew Stafford, correct? I think he's pretty good, yeah. Okay. So, now, since that is the most important position in football, and you have to have, you know, a good to decent defense, but, you know, you run in here every year – and you had this low expectation of them this season. Was it just according to because you, we didn't have a defense? We don't, you know, the, 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 like the parts around Stafford? Or are you going to have some confidence in them and say, hey, we might make the playoffs? Or, you know, I just, it just seems like it's two-sided to me, Doug. I mean, you know, you, you know, you say you love Stafford, but you look at Tom Brady. What's he doing around him? I know it's unfair to, to compare Stafford to Tom Brady. but Brady's, you know, yeah, Brady's I mean, better than him. Evan, what it comes down to is they have no playmakers on defense. Um, uh, maybe yeah, Darius I mean, Slay. Levy was few, not a playmaker few, this year. Ziggy Ansa was not any factor at all this year. They have one yeah, of the worst the running games in the NFL, they're one-dimensional offensively. I think their quarterback is is pretty damn good. I think their punter's pretty damn good. And outside of that, I mean, Golden Tate, I'd give him and Slay above average grades, but I think it's pretty okay. remarkable one, this team's one, in the one, playoffs with this personnel. One last question. So so you're satisfied. You have a good feeling in your stomach. You are you had a happy feeling. You watched that whole Packers game all the oh, way Oh, no, through, Evan, I said I'm like, disappointed. Like, hold on, hold on. I said I'm disappointed. But I'm oh, not okay. mad I'm, about I'm, this I'm just, season. Oh, I'm disappointed okay. in, in the Green Bay game. I'm disappointed with the end of the year. I'm just not mad at them. If I have higher expectations, if I think the roster's better, I'll be mad. You're disappointed. I'm disappointed in the franchise, and so is the, so is the rest of the Detroit. That's why they're calling you. That's why they're texting. That's why they're saying this stuff. It's not because they're disappointed in the team in this year. It's the franchise, Doug. Okay. Well, as far as what they had in on the roster, given what they come from. I'm okay with this season. The first season under Bob Quinn going from five wins to, to becoming a nine, a nine win team, whatever they were last year, or seven win team, uh, to get to be a nine win team with a good draft. I think expectations absolutely go up if Bob Quinn has another good off season. All right. Are you gonna say this after every mediocre season, Doug? <laughs> I'm going to say, Evan, here's what I'm going to say. I'm gonna, if I don't think they're very good, I'll tell you I don't think they're very good. When they were winning games this year, Evan, I don't think we were confusing them for a great football team. Were you? I, did, I wasn't, no. I wasn't Okay, mad. well, then and that, that's was, why I'm not mad. And, and, when they, and, I, and, I, and I was so happy, Doug, with the start of the season. I was like, go Lions. I was the biggest homer, man. I was pumping it up with my dad with my friends. And then I look at the end of the season, and, man, I don't know. I'm happy for you, Doug. I'm happy you're happy. I'm not necessarily happy. I just think they were better than I expect them to be going to the air. Let me ask you this, Evan. This is the the last question. What kind of uh, talent do you think they have on this roster? I think they have um, not superior talent, but I think they have a group of guys, and I do think that we have a great uh, – good defensive coordinator. I think we do have a good offensive coordinator. I think sometimes that a team can, uh, you know, surround each other and create create a streak like they did. 
and you know surprise fans and make fan, make fans happy. But and then sometimes it's these franchises and these teams. What kind of talent like do you New think York they have fans, on their roster, they, they Evan? Can ta- they can take them into the Evan, playoffs. And they can, Evan, <laughs> what kind what? of talent do you think they have on their roster? Um, <clears throat> I think they have uh, some talent defensively, and yeah, they need to improve. They need to improve. That's uh, that's all it is. I mean, I think. <laughs> he couldn't dance around that question he even couldn't. any more than he yeah, but, did. I mean, no. seriously. Then he went to the coordinators right away when you asked about the talent on the roster. This, you know, this, the basic truth is they have zero playmakers on defense. They had maybe Theo Riddick on offense who hasn't played in how many games. He's leading the team with 357 yards rushing. That's embarrassing. They have I, I, one honestly, receiver over 1,000 yards. He just got over 1,000 in Golden Tate. It's, it comes, why am I not irate today? Because... They aren't that great. Like, it's like the Red Wings, okay? When the Red Wings were parading out great rosters, guess what we expected? Stanley Cups. Okay? But this Lions team, look at this Lions roster. Compare it to a Red Wings roster in the middle of Stanley Cup runs. Who's going to the Hall of Fame? Who's in the Pro Bowl? No one. Kerry Hyder leads his team in sacks. Kerry Hyder. Yeah, you're asking who? I'm, yeah, I'm, that's why I said to Evan, what does this roster show you? It doesn't show you elite talent. The result is better than what the roster would tell you you should have. Zach Zenner's second in the team in, in rushing. I swear he's when he played the last two games. If, 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 you know, year two under Bob Quinn, yeah, yeah, the expectation goes up. But year one? Step in the right direction. I get the disappointment. I mean, right. three losses to end the season, and you thought you could host a playoff game, but this is easier for the players to do it than fans. But fans need to reset at some point this week, and I say today or tomorrow, and just move forward yeah. and look forward to the playoff game because it's over. The regular season is over and done with. 97 won the ticket.